Good evening, boys and girls. We are going to read a story to you from Phantasmagoria. I'm Johnny. I'm Abdiel. And get ready for an origin story about doppelgangers. <laughs> this frightening image seen at a window or caught out of the corner of your eye could be your own. It is your double or doppelganger, the sight of which can foretell your imminent death. It is sometimes described as the soul embodied, sometimes an astral projection or an aura, and it presents itself as a warning. Queen Elizabeth I reportedly saw such a vision of herself lying on her deathbed, pale and still, soon before she died. Abraham Lincoln also claimed to have seen his double, and later on would meet his imminent death. Wow. Interesting. That is pretty wacky. I didn't know such prominent people. I didn't know Link, uh, Lincoln had a, 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 a story or a instance. Doppelganger. That, yeah, yeah. Doppelganger. Um, also, uh, Catherine the Great also had, she was a 18th century uh, empress of Russia. Uh, her guards came to her running one night and woke her up saying that they saw her sitting in, in the throne room. So she ran over there with them. They all saw it, and she ordered them to shoot at it, I'm guessing with arrows or whatever. Um, and it doesn't talk too much about if they found the body and killed it, whatever, but they said a week later she died of a stroke. So they're saying that the uh, the figure that they saw was just an omen for to kind of for shadow her, her death. Whoa. And That's you, crazy. Yeah. Um, three, three big names. Three, yeah, well-known people in history. Um, and then, of course... In our own culture, but that's just kind of known as people that look like us. Yeah. But that's where it extends from. And then maybe kind of even go into um, the word doppelganger. It's a uh, German, I think. Yeah, I believe Does it, say it said it was there? German. Yes. So German origin. Origin. Double goer or double walker. Double walker. Yep. That's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, you said you had a um, story. Not as um, no one died, though. I haven't died yet. But um, maybe you will. Maybe he died. Yeah. Have you seen him since? I think. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. So, story. yeah. So when I was 10 or 11 years old, I went on a field trip to I want to say it was like a Bravanel Hall. So it was to see the local, not the local symphony, a symphony from in town. And this is where it gets a little creepier, too, because, you know, I grew up playing music. I started playing piano at the age of eight. Well, like taking lessons at eight, but kind of playing even beforehand. So I'm 11 years old. We're watching this symphony play on stage. And they make this announcement that they have a special guest. And it's this little 11-year-old composer. And he comes out on to stage in his little suit with his baton and waves to the audience. And it was me. And you're 10? I was 10 or 11. Yeah. I kid you not. I'm not even kidding. You can eat. Even if I could get a hold of uh, my friends that were in my class that day, they they kind of did this thing and did a double take. They're like, dude, do you have a long lost twin? Well, that's part of the story too, right? That it's an evil. Um, it's like, like an e It's your evil twin. Yeah. It's like they, your they evil. Your, yeah. Like your, an evil your version. Your evil counter you. counterpart. Right. Dude. And I'm not kidding you. I, I'm 99% sure I went home that day and asked my parents. It's like, you guys uh, like have twins? Give us just get give, rid of one. Give the other one. It's like that. Uh, Do you ever watch that Simpsons episode? Yeah, I know which one. Yeah. Is. I knew you were gonna bring that. <laughs> uh, what was his name? They keep him in the attic. Yeah, <laughs> that was like one of my favorite um, episodes of the Halloween specials. Yeah, uh, and then they. It's funny because Bart ends up being he the was actually twin. the evil one that they accidentally kept. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> the same story. I'm the evil one. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but no, it was such a crazy experience. Like it, it really affected me. It really did. To this I, day, to this day, I was just. I'm you just wonder like, where you're, you're, you're what able to win. Yeah, but then, yeah, coming off of that, I kind of told you too. I mean, there's also someone else that's also represented uh, by my agent as well that looks. What if it's the same person? I often wonder. It that. has to be because if it's like if he lived here. Well, right? I don't. I don't know if he lived here because it was because they were from out of town. I think. 
they weren't the local symphony. But maybe he moved here. You should try and <laughs> find know? out his name. We'll get him on the podcast. Yeah. How creepy would that be? We had someone exactly that looked like you. Have a doppelganger yeah. on the podcast? That would be pretty gnarly. That'd be cool. Though. I could probably get his info. We should, like, yeah, we should search him out. And... But, oh, I, it, yeah. And I got to find you the brochure that um, yeah, they I sent see me in that. the mail. Because you know, if you if find that, if we can get it before this, we air this, then we can put it up on the. Yeah. And be like, do you know this man? But, um,. <laughs> yeah apparently he did a shoot for a company that i had done a shoot for couldn't you ask them for their his, uh, i guess they couldn't wouldn't give out um you could just say it's you I hey i lost my info yeah i'm like hey i, was, I did this shoot for you guys uh, what's my number again what are they <laughs> <laughs> what's my name again um but yeah that was kind of that's been my experience with it so it's it was really unique man i it's so funny because i didn't even really think about that until this popped up today i was yeah. like oh my gosh yeah i legit have a doppelganger and it's crazy because I think everyone has like a doppelganger or someone that looks like them. But mm -hmm. like when it's someone that looks exactly like you, that's crazy. Man. It is crazy. Well, and it also says it's a form of astral projection, which is also really relevant. Uh, a lot of people have had those experiences. One of our past guests, Raven, said that he's had that. How is that tied to astral projection? Well, because astral projection, you kind of come out of your body and you can see yourself. I, I don't know the hmm. quantum physics behind it. But well, it's that, a I mean, a, of astral projection so. could be like an entire. I mean, we'll dive into that too, like eventually. Right? Yeah, because it's an entirely different thing. It's like so. Yeah, I think doppelganger refers to the realm of just you on a different plane altogether. But then it can also be in the form of the actual physical plane that you're on, which is what I got to experience, and it was crazy. Like we had the same hair. We both had buzzed heads at the age of ten or eleven, whatever it was. I think it was like fifth grade, so ten. Yeah. And but yeah, dude, this little dude came out and he was conducting a symphony of people older than him. Crazy. And it was just weird because they're like, yeah, he's like pretty talented musician. I was like, I, well, I'm not talented, but I'm, I'm a, a musician a too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's my story. Cool. Kind of crazy. But that is our story for today from Phantasmagoria on Doppelgangers by terry breverton thanks for stopping by everybody we'll see you again soon